Ben Stiller, I'm so happy that you're uh, here and that you're doing our show. Uh, I got to be honest, I, I just heard the news about your dad uh, the other day passing Jerry Stiller. And I go, well, um, I don't know if we'll be seeing Ben on the show, you know, but you're a man of your word and you're, you're on the show. So this is, I know this must be tough, but thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I, thanks. It's good to see you, man. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I figured it would be good to do it because it would be a chance to talk about my dad a little bit. And, you know, it's a weird time now, you know, and, and people can't really gather together and you can't do sort of a, you know, so I think some, somewhere down the line we'll do a memorial for him when everybody can get together because yeah, there's so many people who loved him and, you know, and he worked with. But I thought it'd be nice to be able to, you know, just have a moment to, to uh, celebrate him a little bit. Yeah, because we, we actually got to work together with him and your mom. Yeah, and that's literally one of the first things I thought of when I knew I was going to do the show was that that time that we did the charades game on your show. And it's, it's one of the most ridiculous things ever. <laughs> my, dad, this was my dad and my mom, and they were such a unit together. And they, you know, they just had this amazing chemistry and were married for 60 plus years and worked together you know, their whole lives. So to watch them, you know, just do their thing together. And of course my dad, you know, it's the way that he was always funny was that he, he wasn't really trying to be funny. He, I mean, he was aware of, you know, that he wanted to be funny, but he wouldn't go for a laugh. He'd just be himself. And for him playing charades was such a, a you know, he was talking through the whole thing. Literally escape what he was doing. <laughs> it's so funny. It was in the audience, I mean, but I think that, you know, and seeing them together in front of a live audience too, that was like, as a fan of comedy, just going like, it's just so awesome to watch two professionals just turn it on, you know, who, they've done it for years. Years, I mean, I mean, yeah, they started out, you know, in the late 50s, they got married in 1953. And I think they started doing their act around 1960 to try to make money because they're both starving actors. And uh, my dad always wanted to do comedy. My mom never really did. She was a serious actress. My dad dragged her into it. And of course she was brilliant at it. Um, and, but she, she always, it always stressed her out, you know, and they go on the Ed Sullivan show, which was huge, right? And there was, you know, 30 million people watching and he had to invite you back the next week. So there was always that pressure. And, um, they, every time they went on, they did it 35 times or 30, I don't know, something like that. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, when your dad came on, obviously people knew him from at the time Seinfeld of, uh, uh, George Costanza's dad and like. They know him from yelling, and it, and it couldn't be more opposite in real life. No, he was very, very um, quiet, and you know, he, I think he had he suppressed a lot, and it just did his whole life. And he came up from this this upbringing where he's very, very poor. His dad was a bus driver, Depression era New York City, um, and you know, he had all this kind of stuff inside of him. But that was the way, that's where it would come out. It would come out, yeah. you know, in the characters. Did you, uh, do you, have you heard like any stories like, or remembered any stories where, like, like uh, in the past week? I mean, you know, there's a lot of people have reached out, which has been really nice. I mean, just to, to feel how, how much he uh, touched people, how much, you know, how much uh, enjoyment he gave people. Cause it really, I mean, I know that he would have felt good about all this, you know? Um, uh. cause, cause he, you know, cause he really, you know, if you would ask him, he would say, uh, you know, like, like, do you care about kind of all like, you know, the show business aspect of things? And he really did. He, but he'd always say, but like, I really care. You know, I just I really care about my kids and my kids being happy. And he'd be so happy watching us do our thing. That really made or his grandkids do their thing. Yeah, um, he got to he got to see his grandkids. And yeah, did he did he get to yeah. uh, influence them at all? Are they? Uh, yeah, I mean, they loved him and they, they love him. You know, he. Uh, there's a story that's uh, pretty funny that he came to Ella, uh, my daughter's fourth grade play. They were doing Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I think. And he came to see it at the school. And afterwards I said, Dad, what'd you think? And he said, uh, I didn't care for it. I didn't care for it. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, Ella was a Ella had the commitment and she was shining up there, but I didn't feel the rest of the kids were up to it. They, they, they just... <laughs> He was kidding. And my mom was like, Jerry, what the hell are you talking about? It's a poor kid. Play. <laughs> like, I, I just didn't feel it. I, I, I think, no, no, no. And, and it's so funny because he was really, it, was, <laughs> it really bothered him. <laughs> uh, that, and, uh, would he come uh, see you perform? What? what? Would he ever see you perform? Yeah, he came to everything. You know, he was a very, very supportive dad. Uh, 
I remember the first job I had was a play uh, in New York, House of the Leaves, and it ran for a while on Broadway. And I had a small part in it, but uh, he would he would do what they call second acting it, which is you know you come into the second act and sort of slip in and don't tell anybody. Uh, and he'd do that all the time because he just wanted to watch and and you know and enjoy it. Also, but I mean you, you, the whole family, including you, you're very New York. Is there any New York City moments that you have that you uh, remember of your dad and all you can talk about? I mean, I have, there's, there's so many, because it was like growing up in the 70s with, uh, you know, in New York, first of all, it was a whole other world, right? And I mean, I, I had my bike stolen when I was about 11 years old, 11 or 12 years old in Riverside Park. You know, a kid like, I, I was with a friend and then this kid came over and sort of said, hey, can I take a ride on your bike? And my friend said that that kid was cool. And, and the kid took the bike and never came back. Yeah. And, um, and so my dad took me to, uh, to buy another bike, to buy a secondhand bike. It was like buy a, it was like, it was a, like at a Schwinn, like three speed. And we were at the bike store on Amsterdam Avenue. And I saw the kid who took my bike riding on my bike. And I said, that's the dad, that's the kid, that's the kid. And he started running after the kid. And I ran no. after that and he chased him down. The kid's riding the bike and saw that my, you know, my dad was running after him. And he How ran like three, what, like three or four blocks on Amsterdam Avenue and then t turned down 86th Street. And I mean, a long run. But he used to run at the Y all the time. So he had trained for it, I guess. Um, and he, the kid went into like this, like lower level of a, of a walk up on 86th Street and my dad said, all right, wait here, I'm gonna go in. And he went in, bike. yeah. And uh, 10 minutes go by and he comes out and he doesn't have the bike. I said, w w what's going on? He goes, we're gonna let him keep the bike. We're gonna let him keep it, he needs it. I'll go get you another one. And he, he uh, literally let the kid keep the bike because he felt, felt bad. That's a great story. I mean, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> uh, that's so it's yeah. awful though, that's actually. I wasn't happy at the time, I think. <laughs> Uh, I don't put my bike back, but you were friends. You were like friends. Was this is remember uh, there was some story that we didn't tell on the show. I don't think, but I remember you telling me or something that did you try LSD or something once and you called your dad? Yes, I, and I have talked about this, um, but I ex yes, it's it's a, kind of a crazy story. But when I was 16 years old. I, I had a friend and, you know, we experimented and tried LSD, which is the first and last time I took it. Um, it was not a fun experience for me. Um, and my- where, where were you? I was in, in New York. I was on the same Upper West Side, uh, like near the Museum of Natural History, um, pre United the Museum. And uh, I got freaked out, scared. And my first instinct was, I'm going to call my parents because every kid calls his parents on LSD, right? Um, that's, but that, I guess maybe that speaks to our relationship too, because I felt like, okay, that's where I wanted to go. And they happened to be in Los Angeles uh, shooting a Love Boat episode. Oh. So, and my parents were not, you know, I would not really into the drug world, I'd say. You know, my sure. parents, they were working in the 60s. They used to say like they missed the entire 60s because they were working. Um, <laughs> and so, that's, uh, that's great. And, I, and I said, Dad, I'm, um, I took some acid. And I, I think his first thought was like acid, like he drank battery acid. <laughs> um, he didn't know. And, and, and I said, no, it's LSD. And I could just sort of hear him, uh, like the silence on the other end of the phone. Because I really, I think he was just that feeling of like, oh, I, you know, I failed as a parent. And then the next thing he said was like, it's going to be okay. And he started to talk me down, even though he knew nothing about drugs. He said, I know what you're feeling. When I was 10 years old, I smoked a pell-mell cigarette and I was sick for two days. And I said, no, it's not, <laughs> this is different. A little bit different, Dad. I'm seeing like m r monsters coming out of the wall. Yes, like, exactly. <laughs> but, the the know, room is melting. Yeah, uh, it, it was <laughs> smoked actually- Smoked a pell-mell no, once. <laughs> yeah. My parents, they didn't do drugs either. Yeah, no, that, very straight, my dad. I think like his thing was, you know, it was all about just, it was all about the work. It was always just putting it all into the work. Uh, well, he definitely entertained uh, millions of people, but I mean, uh, everyone loved him. And I, I hope that uh, all, you see all these nice stories and keep all of them somewhere just so uh, we can always uh, think about him. And, and anytime you want to come on the show and tell stories about him, if you even just think of one, I'm here for you because I'd love to hear him. I thought he Thanks. was great. Uh, and I was, an, I was so honored to meet your mom and dad. 
and uh, and just it, just to meet them, but then to do a bit with them too. That was great. Uh, I just remember them having so much fun and like the same thing as you, like seeing them sort of light up and being able to kind of do their thing. It was so natural and, you know, yeah. I also have to say just, you know, I, I feel really fortunate, you know, like at this time, because just to say it, that there's so many people dealing with so much, you know, in, in terms of what's going on with uh, COVID and, and losing people and not being able to, be together with them that I just, you know, my heart goes out to all those people because I, I feel very fortunate that, you know, I was able to be with my dad and, um, you know, it's not like that for so many people right now. So, so I want to yeah. put that out there. You know, my heart goes out to those people who, who are losing people.